food recovery. This is actually the last episode of the year, the last episode of 2018. And what we're going to talk about is a little bit about gratitude and what I'm grateful for and what gratitude actually means and kind of the power behind, I think, gratitude and where it comes from. I talk a lot about mindset being the power behind my success, that the way that I think about myself and my relationship with food is really that helps me fight my addiction. And I think our most powerful tool that we own is our mind. We have the power within us to practice and work the mind. And since addiction plays a role in my depression and anxiety, my mind is one of my most powerful tools I can use to battle that. And how does all of this talk about gratitude? Because I think it's through gratitude that we find peace. Gratitude is a sense of being thankful for something. You can't truly be grateful for something and find gratitude in in something if you're angry about another one. True gratitude to feel that inside you really can't have these other negative feelings because gratitude is truly being thankful for the moment and for what you are experiencing. And see, my addiction to food started very young and it was covering up a lot of issues of depression and social anxiety. A lot of people don't realize that I have these issues because I'm very good at hiding them. Growing up, I was alone a lot of time. And for me, food meant comfort. It meant security. It meant acceptance. And so whether there was guilt and shame after, it didn't matter. It was, it was what made me feel good. It's what made, you know, it, it's being alone. There wasn't other people that I could bounce off of and, and feel. It was, it was food. And food was, was there for me. And, you know, the moments in which... I physically felt the food and eating it, it felt better than any consequence that could come after. It was about immediate gratification. And slowly my addiction became worse and worse and I fell into a mindset of I'm going to be a big woman. I was going to embrace being a big woman because I wasn't prepared to do anything about it. Honestly, no matter what I knew I had to do and how to become healthy, I just chose not to. I made the conscious decision that I was going to be a big woman. I slowly started having health risks and none of them seemed like, oh my God, this is really bad. It was, oh, um, I'm pre-diabetic, but that's okay. I'm not full on diabetic. I'm just pre-diabetic. I need to watch my sugar, you know, kind of thing. I was high blood pressure, taking three medications for it. Oh, and I'm not drinking any more caffeine or Coke anymore. I switched to Sprite. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm all right. And it wasn't all right. To me, it, it, it didn't matter that I wasn't really healthy. I didn't care. I just wanted to know that I could get my next fix. I could enjoy food. And this is what I wanted to live for, the next best meal. Could I cook a better meal? Could I discover a new restaurant that I can indulge and satisfy my addiction? It was slowly becoming my identity. It didn't happen overnight. It didn't happen when I was like 16, 17. It was like one little thing after another that started to become this woman who was overweight and a chef. And it became my identity so much that my family actually started introducing me as, this is our chef. You know, they were, my family is so proud of me, and, and I'm so grateful that I have my family. And, you know, but instead of even introducing my name, it was, you know, this is our chef. This is this is the chef of the family. This is, this is who she is. And, you know, of course, you know, people start talking. We start talking about food. And my mind, my world was food. So I was in it, deep into my addiction, deep, deep into it. And even... If, you look, if I really look at my life during that time, and even to this day, I still love to talk about food. I'm doing a podcast called Food Recovery because it, it really engulfed everything that I was. It really became my identity. 
And so in the midst of my addiction, in the midst of being, you know, I'm going to be a heavy woman and deal with this, um, I was also dealing with a broken marriage and thought, you know what would really help? And this is really what I need is let's bring a child into this. And yeah, right? Smart. And so when I didn't get pregnant, I went to a fertility doctor and, you know, figure out why am I not getting pregnant? What's going on? What do I need to do besides lose weight? And um, they performed a biopsy that day and it came back that it was cancer. I never thought about cancer. I had thought about a heart attack. Yes. was like, all right, you know, I'm probably going to die in my sleep of a heart attack quietly, whatever. But cancer? No, no, never cancer. The following eight, nine months, I believe, of battling cancer included more medication and doctor visits than I care to remember. It was some of the most difficult time in my life, but I, I promised myself that I was going to get healthy, that I, I didn't just want to sit around and let life pass me by anymore. I wanted to actually live life. I wanted to be able to adopt and participate in my children's life. I, I didn't want to be this little person in the corner anymore. I wanted, I wanted to experience things. I wanted to do things that, you know, people weren't going to tell me how the world was. I was going to be able to see the world. Um, being overweight didn't cause my cancer, but it didn't help my issues. And though I beat cancer, I lost the ability to have children. I, and that was, was probably one of the most heartbreaking things for me, was having a hysterectomy. And whenever I've, I've shared with somebody that, you know, I've had cancer and, and you know, what I've gone through, I, I get a lot of, you know, I'm so sorry to hear that. And at first, you know, it kind of used to make me feel a little bad. You know, yeah, I know. It's what I've gone through. It's my battle. But after it's been six years since I've been in remission, so I've been, I've been dealing with this for a long time. I've, I come up with a new answer, and it's a, it's a mindset. Again, remember, I'm talking about a mindset here. And I say, don't be. Don't be sad or sorry that I had cancer. It sucks. Yes, it sucks absolutely that I had cancer. But because this happened, it led me to living a healthy lifestyle. It led me to losing 160 pounds. Because if not, I would have been dead by a heart attack by now. I wouldn't have continued. So something as horrible as cancer... I found me and my health. I'm actually grateful that I was diagnosed. I'm stronger because I was diagnosed with cancer. Now, do I feel optimistic and hip hop that I had cancer? No, no, absolutely not. Cancer sucks ass. It sucks. I hope that nobody ever has to go through it. But it happened. It did. It's, it's part of life that it happened to me in my life. And I can look at it as it stole the most precious thing to me, which was being a mother. Or I can look at it as it gave me the best gift, my health and the about my ability to find myself. So it's the mindset. It's how we think about things. I'm looking at cancer as something that saved my life versus something that took away from it. When you go through something that could have killed you, you realize how strong you are. You realize how short life can be. And you don't want to waste another moment. You don't want to waste what could have, would have, should have been. And being overweight, you have a lot of those moments. You have a lot of what could have, what have, whatever. And so this mindset of gratitude has really helped me throughout the years. It's really helped me to, you know, still have a positive outlook on life and still have realized that whatever happens to me can be kind of okay in the end. It doesn't have to be okay in that moment, but eventually there's something good that can come out of the worst of the worst possible circumstances. And uh, I want to tell a story of exactly how gratitude helped me and literally this practice. 
So recently I moved to the Virgin Islands. Um, This was actually last year, right after my eight-month road trip. I moved to the Virgin Islands August 29th. And September 6th, seven days after arriving to St. John, Hurricane Irma hit the island I was on. It completely devastated the island and all the infrastructure. I was able to stay and help with recovery efforts um, until we were notified that Hurricane Maria was about to hit the island and that Puerto Rico, the island that had been our recovery aid, our the island that we were actually evacuating to because of Irma, was now also about to get demolished. And when I was evacuated, I left behind friends who who were experiencing Maria. And I got evacuated to a town in North Carolina and was very blessed to have a friend let me stay at her house before I flew back to California. And while I was there, I was angry. I felt bitter. I, I, I really, I, I, I didn't want to be where I was. I, I was, I, I couldn't make sense of what had just happened. I couldn't understand why I, I had went through the hurricane, why, you know, people lost everything. I lost every, why, why, why? I was, I was in this angry, angry why stage. And all I wanted to do was drown myself in liquor and forget the feelings that I had experienced. And After one day of feeling this way, and I actually, I I spoke to my dad, and my dad's like, you don't sound right, you need help. And I was like, I do. I remember saying that to him. I really do need help. And I was like, you know, this is, this isn't me. There's something, you know, there's something wrong here. And I was like an angry zombie who couldn't figure out what to do. It, It was... It was weird. So I, I went outside and, and I laid down on like a storage bench and I, I put a towel down and I just laid down there and, and I laid down for maybe two, three hours, maybe more. And I tried to figure out something that I was grateful for. I couldn't think of anything. It, it took me a while. I could not think. I couldn't even be grateful that I was alive after experiencing what was one of the worst hurricanes in history I I wasn't even grateful for my life at that moment and I couldn't find something to be thankful for I couldn't find a reason to say thank you God thank you for allowing me to to breathe um there was nothing that could bring me joy in those in those moments so like I said I, I laid there for what three maybe four hours until I finally heard some birds chirp. I started hearing them chirp in their song and my eyes were closed. I feel the wind and the breeze in my face and I started to smile. And I could hear that, you know, that, that there was just this beauty in their song and, and, and the, just a, this, this moment, it made me feel joy. And that's what I was grateful for at that moment. That's, that's what I was able to cling on to, this little tiny moment of being able to hear birds chirp. The next day, I did the exact same thing. It took me a while, and I found another thing to be grateful for. And I just kept adding. I kept adding to all the things that I started to realize what it is that really I was grateful for. And I didn't find the full gratitude of what I experienced in the storm. You know, it's, it's still to this day very difficult for me to kind of go through what I went through and talk about it. Um, but since coming back, I've actually established a better relationship with both my parents, both my mom and my dad. I've something that I've, I've been working on my entire life to have a good relationship with my parents and you know, for whatever reason, this storm kind of mixed things all around and, uh, and allowed me to, to kind of set new intentions with both of them, be able to say, you know, let's do this fresh start and let's, let's actually work on things. Let's establish, you know, to have a lifelong relationship with each other. On top of that, I, I was 
I was able to kind of dive into creating this podcast, Food Recovery, that allows me to heal and grow as a person and share my story with other people. And if I would have been in the Virgin Islands and if I would have stayed in St. John and Hurricane Irma would have never happened, I might have not ever been able to do those things. Maybe eventually it would have happened years later, but the opportunity arose because I went through Hurricane Irma. And so finding gratitude, finding the positive things that come out of the negative, it's not to say that the negative or those bad experiences you know, didn't define you and don't make you who you are, but let them make you stronger. Be grateful for the dark days because they allow you to walk in the light so much more with strength. And, you know, life, life is, is going to come ups and downs, highs and lows. And it's scary. It's scary to, to think, you know, that, um, how quickly what we plan and what we anticipate can be taken from us and can change without any control of ours. And I read a quote once that said, it is not what happens to you that defines you, but it is how you react to what happens that defines your character. It is our reactions to what happens that truly defines us. Because in the worst of times, we truly see true character. And finding gratitude and finding happiness in what should have killed you and finding those things, finding true gratitude, I think, is what allows you to find hope for the future. I look at some of the worst things in my life and I, and I try to find the good in them. I had a strict mother, but because she was strict, she gave me character and strength to battle what the world ahead of me. I was married for 12 years, but if I wouldn't have been married, I would have never tried to get pregnant and I would have never been diagnosed with cancer. And if I would have never been diagnosed with cancer, I would have never gotten healthy. If I never would have gotten healthy, I would have never been here. I truly believe in karma. I truly believe in that the world in itself, you know, it turns around and eventually everything happens for a reason. But we can't stop and look at life and say, why me? Why did this happen? We have to stop and say, thank you. What can I learn from this? How can I grow from this? I've had some of the worst things in my life that have happened throughout every every moment that kicks me and I go man why 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 did that man I thought this was going to be the one or I thought this was going to be the apartment I thought this was going to be the guy I thought this was going to be I thought my mom she used to say this saying in Spanish and I'm going to say it in English in the aspect that we plan and God laughs I always took that as we can make all the plans in the world, but God really knows what he wants in store for us. So be expect, expect the unexpected. Because what you have planned isn't necessarily what the world's going to throw at you, isn't necessarily what life is going to throw at you. I think gratitude is something that we should try to practice every day. Show gratitude for those who love you. Show gratitude to those who help you, you know, show gratitude to strangers, be thankful. It's amazing how having that sense of gratitude is also a sense of empowerment. You know, you feel when I can say that I am grateful that I had cancer, to me, I feel empowered. I feel like I'm taking control over what happened to me. Instead of saying I'm sad and hurt, that I had cancer and can't have children and so on and so forth. I say I'm grateful. I'm grateful that I had it because I'm healthy. I'm alive. And I'm going to take every single moment to the fullest. And that's a mindset. Because both of them are realities. Both of them are true. But which one I repeat and which one I choose to believe and choose to make my reality 
is what's going to define how I present myself and how I feel about myself. And so it's those little things that can kind of help you. And with ending this podcast, I want to share my top five things that I am grateful for in my life. And first and foremost, I want to say I am so grateful for my mother. She has given me a home and a place where I can be my truest self. She's always supported me and been my biggest cheerleader. She's the one who's always told me that I was capable of doing so many more things than what I believed I was. And she has loved me unconditionally since I was a little girl, even with my bad attitude and spoiled bratness. I'm grateful that I have a family for being my foundation and my support. And they're the reason I will always call California home because it's always the reason why I'm going to come back. I know that no matter where in the world I land or go, California is home because of the people that I have there. The people that I love, the people that have been my foundation. And without them, I wouldn't be here. I'm grateful for my friends, my close girlfriends, my best friends, Crystal, Dee, Rachel, Sarah, Alexi. You ladies, you have given me the ability to laugh when I never thought it was possible. You have given me a shoulder to cry on. You have been the sisters that I always wish I had throughout my life. I have been blessed with amazing women and blessed to have called you guys my friends. You have seen me through some of my darkest and some of my brightest days. And I appreciate every single one of you for walking with me in my journey. I am grateful for my students. My students have given me motivation whenever I think that I have, whenever I think I have it tough, I look at my kids and I think, man, they made it in today, so so do I. I gotta get up. It gives me an inspiration, it's a reason why. I, I believe that I'm stronger, it's my motivating force. And I'm grateful for every obstacle for every lesson and for every mistake. Because each of those things has taught me and it continues to teach me that I am a strong, I am beautiful, I am independent, and I can do whatever I set my mind to. Through gratitude, through my mindset, through my will, through my energy, and through hard work, I'm going to accomplish my dreams. I'm going to make these things a reality. So thank you, everybody, so much for sharing with me this past six months, um, the food recovery. I'm extremely grateful for every single one of you guys who, who continues to support me, who continues to listen to these podcasts, who continues to come in every other Sunday or whenever I drop a random podcast. Thank you. Thank you because you guys keep on motivating me to do what I'm doing. So thank you again for joining and listening to me on food recovery today. I hope you all have a happy and safe new year. If you're interested in more information, please log on to my website, themotivatedchef.com. And hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, share your love, share your support. Happy New Year, everybody, and stay healthy.